You can see my screen, right? Yeah, uh, I, we can see. All right, let's go. Cool. So we don't really have a lot of time left, uh, and I really don't want to keep you guys again today. So let's just get into it. What we're doing today are the iterations, the loops, different types of iterations that we, we would be covering. And uh, they're like for loop, while loop, do while loop, and these kind of things. They're, they're all iterations. Iteration is what you keep, like repeat, repeated tasks. Um, can, can you mute uh, whoever's, like, is in mute? Guys, yeah. Whoever is muted, could you please mute yourself? Okay, so given an integer variable k that has already been declared, use a for loop uh, to print a single line consisting of 97 asterisks. Use no variables other than k. So uh, it's, the k is already assigned. Now you have to keep in mind that it is assigned, but not not necessarily uh, given a value. So we we have to give it a value. Loops are for let's just get into the syntax of uh, for loop first. Uh, what we do, how we how we write for loop, we just start off with for, and then this this block right here, we is like explain how it's gonna iterate, how it's gonna repeat the task that whatever it's gonna be inside the block. So first we wanna uh, like set a variable that you start of this is the starting position for k you know, equals to 0 that means that it's gonna start k at 0 so it's just gonna repeat on doing everything that's gonna be inside the loop inside the body and it would increment k by 1 because I'm saying it to do it by 1 uh, every time it's gonna finish the loop so it will start from here complete this, wh whatever lines are here, it's going to execute all of these, and then it's going to go back to here. And it, it'll add 1 to k, and then it'll start again. And it'll keep on doing it until k is less than 97, until this comp is true. Uh, you don't have to close the first line. No. No, you don't have to. Um, you you mean the break? You don't have to break the line. No, not in this one. Not for the for, for loop. For loop is like this. You start off, and this is how you, how you close it. So, but other others you have to. Uh, but not uh, what I notice when you you are like starting the loop, you don't break it. You break it afterwards. Uh, you'll see when we will do the do while. So for the do part, we won't break it. But for the for the while part, we will break it. So. What uh, we are doing here is we are starting off uh, the k from 0, and then we will keep on going until k is less than 97. So we will keep on repeating it until this becomes true. Uh, or, or Sorry, until this remains true. So we will keep on doing it. As soon as this becomes false, we will stop. We won't do it again. And then again, we will increment it by 1 k plus plus so we did it yesterday so the plus plus means that we will be incrementing it by one so how it's what it will do is it's just print hysterics it will execute this line 97 times because we're starting from zero and we we're reaching to 96 so until 96 it will remain true as soon as it is 97 it will it will be false so if we were to write this equals to 97, it'll be it'll in, it'll write 98 because it's starting from zero. For that, we would have to make this one. Now this is also correct. Okay. So let me just give you the answers as well. I know you guys want it. <laughs> okay. Yes. Paul, the curly brackets, again, uh, is the same thing as we did yesterday. Uh, same thing we did in uh, conditions. Curly brackets, we put it uh, if there are more than one lines. If it's just one line, you know, don't necessarily have to do it. It's all, Actually, it's really good practice that you do it. I was just, you know, just wanted to get it right. I wasn't sure that uh, I would be presenting. Otherwise, I would have done it this way. Um, other than that, I mean, you. I would say you do it. It's just good practice that you put in the blocks because later on, what you, you might want to go back into your loop and you might want to add more lines to it, right? So you don't at that point you don't want to be adding the curly brackets, or you may forget to do it. So it's just best practice as soon as you open up, as you start writing a loop or an if condition, you you know you add the block, you add this parenthesis so that you make this a block. 
Okay. There you go. Now, uh, again, this is what it's asking. Give an integer, uh, give an integer variable n that has already been declared and initialized to a positive value. So, I mean, it's it it is it has already been given a value, a positive value, and another integer variable j that has already been in it declared, but it hasn't been given a value. So, right? It's not telling us here. So, use a for loop to pr print a single line consisting of n asterisks. Thus, if n contains five five asterisks will be printed. Use no variables other than n and j. So how we will do it, uh, we don't know what n is. So we would actually have to, you know, uh, just start it in a way that four, we started, uh, start off with four. Again, we started from zero. Usually that is the case. Some like, most of the times you'll notice in like when you, when, like you'll be doing loops uh, in the future, you would most likely be starting it from point zero. Uh, the reason, another reason for it is because the, the way you will be using loops, it, you would be using loops for arrays. Array starts from zero. The index of array is starts from zero. So that's mm -hmm. another reason why you would be doing starting it from zero. I mean, again, it's just normal practice to start off the loop uh, with zero or just one. Or I mean, it could be even hundred. I mean, if you if uh, the, the question says that you start loop, uh, if you that you write, uh, you just print out numbers from starting from 100 to 200 then what what you'll do is you'll just you know start this off from 100 and use the variable j inside the body of the loop and it the first value of the j uh, when the loop starts would be 100 so okay. that's how this works uh, guys i think uh, you guys i mean not all, everyone is muted so whenever you have questions you can just unmute yourself and you can you can ask questions so if you do not want to you know um, write in the chat since I've started writing answers that's what I did I didn't want to you know mess it up I just wanted answers to be in one place so I you know I stopped talking so if you have any questions you can unmute uh, we can we can go through it perhaps I don't know something we can we all can learn from it all right so how this how we're gonna do it uh, because we want to write number of n number of hysterics so what we'll do is we'll start off from, from zero and then uh, what we will do is we will keep on going until j is less than n. So let's say if it's 5, it will start from 0 and then 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's 5. And as soon as j is going to go to 5th, like j is going give, to be given a value 5, it will stop. It'll, it won't execute and it will just break the loop and just continue going on to uh, whatever lines we have afterwards. So. is the answer again uh, we're starting from zero we're going to uh, uh, going to a point which which is less than n and we're incrementing uh, j by one every time we're just adding one to it and we're just printing out uh, aesthetics oh another one another thing I didn't mention the last one we are using print it's not it's asking us to print it in a line not in different lines, which is why we're going to be using print. Uh, it won't add line after executing this statement. So after executing this statement, the cursor would remain at that point. So it will execute this again, and the cursor would still remain at that point after the next hysteric. All right. So the next one, write a for loop and that prints the integer zero to through thirty nine, separated by spaces. So now it's asking us to add spaces in between. Uh, zero, uh, like in between every integer that we're going to put on the screen. So we we will start it off from uh, zero again. It's not given. It's not given us any variables. It hasn't uh, like stated here that there are any variables that has already been initialized, declared, given a value or anything. Which is why what we will do is we will initialize this value here. Now, if we initialize a value, a variable here. Sorry, not value variable. Uh, you have to keep in mind that it will only stay. Uh, um, like it will only be available as long as the loop is running. As soon as you come out of the loop and you say like you know uh, print um, the entire thing, I'm not printing that out. Like I'm not writing that out. So if you say print uh, i, it wouldn't do anything because I, even if at the end of the loop i is i's value is 39, but afterwards it, there's no uh, i no longer exists. So it would not print any value. Uh, because the scope of the variable is only until the loop is running. 
uh, afterwards uh, the variable is doesn't doesn't exist in the memory it just it has the for loop would clear it out so we are initializing a, a variable i and we give it a value of 0 and we keep our we keep it uh, running the we keep the loop running until i reaches 239 until i is less than or equal to 39 and again we give we increment it by 1 every time uh, it's going to complete its run it will add 1 to i and then it will check for the this statement if it is true or not and it it will keep on running until this is true as soon as this becomes false and as soon as this reaches i reaches to 40 it will stop and this is how we are dealing with the system out dot print i plus uh, space so every time the loop runs the first time it's going to run it will um, it will be zero see it's asking us to start from zero if it had asked us to start from one we would we would write one here so uh, Every time this is going to run, it will uh, print the value of i and it will add a space. And then it will print a value of i and it will add space. It will keep on doing it until it reaches 39. As soon as the value reaches to 40, it, it will not execute this. Okay? Yes. Yes. Because it wasn't available to us uh, to begin with, we we could have done it outside the loop as well. Uh, in that case, if we were to initialize a variable, let's say we do it here, int i, and we could even give it a value, uh, let's say one, right? So and then we start it off, and j then we say i. I think this is possible. I'm not sure. I haven't tried it, but uh, I mean, you give the value. You do not give a value here. So you say int i, and you say i equals to one or zero it will start from it it will keep on going but afterwards the i would still be available because the scope of i is not just inside the loop it's actually outside the loop right so i don't have to initialize the variable here uh, and it will still be available to me after the loop okay i uh, write a for loop that prints the odd number integers 11 through 121 inclusive inclusive keep this in mind it wants us to print 11 and 121 as well separated by spaces separate this part should be clear we did in the last question how we will be adding spaces and we, this this will continue this will keep on coming so you need to understand how we are adding spaces uh, after each run we're just you know adding this in the system out and every time it runs it will add space and the cursor would be after the space and then it will add i so how we will write 11 through 121 and the odd numbers without making it so much complicated just using the for loop uh, we what we would do is uh, we will start off uh, from 11 right because it wants us to uh, include 11 as well so we include 11 we start i int i is 11 initializing the variable i and giving it a value of 11 and we keep on going until it reaches 121 after that it will stop and then this is the this is the increment how this is going to happen there are a number of ways of doing it this is the most basic way of incrementing uh, i think another way of uh, doing it is uh, this i think if you just write this it will uh, I, again, um, don't quote me on this one. You can uh, you can Google it and you can confirm it if this is another way of doing it. But I'm pretty sure this is how you do it. So you just increment it by two. Every time it's what it's doing, it it is adding. You, so when it executes the loop, it executes this. So after executing all these lines, whatever the the block of the loop is, it it'll execute this, and then it'll check for this condition. And it would not come here again. It is the only time the for loop would come to this point is when it will it will start. Afterwards, uh, it it's keep on checking for this value after the, the executing this after the increment part. However, you do the increment, it's up to you. I plus plus would mean uh, increment by one. I equals I plus two would mean you are incrementing two. So first time it will run, it will print eleven, right? Next time, what it will do is it will add 2 to the value of i, which would be 13. And it will check if it is less than or equal to 121, then it will run. So it will write 13 after uh, as a value, and then it will add space. And then it will do the same thing over and over again until it reaches to uh, 121. All right, write a for loop that prints in ascending order all the positive multiples of 5 that are less than 175 sp separated by spaces. 
Uh, I think again, like there are a number of uh, the code needs to tell you if it is odd. Uh, yes, you're right. The code needs to tell you if it's odd. Um, we're doing it here. This part is taking care of uh, you're incrementing it by two. And like you have an, a suggestion how we can handle it. Yes. System system doesn't know what odd is, what even is. I mean, we tell system that it's even or it's odd. How? By by incrementing two. So we we could write even numbers. Uh, yes, yes. That again, that's another way. But it's because the exercise is for four loops. That is why there is not. Uh, it doesn't. We it doesn't really require us to add if statements. That is another way of doing it, of finding out if the number is even or odd. And that would require more resources too. That's another thing. So you want to avoid that too. If you could just simply handle it using this one, might as well, right? So another thing, we, if you we want to do even numbers, we would do the same thing. We would increment not just by one, by two, but what we will do is we will start off by 10. So it will start with 10. 12, 14, 16, this is how it will print from 10 to 120 or whatever the range we're going to set it here. Okay, so the next one is uh, that prints. Okay, again, even for this one, there, were, there are a number of uh, the ways that you can do it. Uh, what it's asking us to do is, uh, is in ascending order, all the positive multiples of 5. What are the multiples of 5? You In math, you know what the math table is. 5 into 1 is 5. 5 5 into 2 is 10. So that's what it's asking us. And it wants us the answer, like 5 into 2 equals to 10. So it wants the 10. That's the part. Not to uh, in, uh, go beyond 175. What I did was, you know, I, I just, you know, did this. So 175 divided by 5 is 35. So it doesn't want us to go beyond 35. So that's what I did. So what you do is, I is not available. So you're just going to initialize it. And then uh, what you'll do is um, you, you don't go beyond 35 and you increment it by 1 because you want to multiply 5 by 1 then 2 and 3 and 4 and 5 and then you what you do is uh, you just print out i into 5 and then you add a space right so for the first time i is going to be 1 to 5 into 1 is going to be what 5 and then it's going to print 10 uh, then you want, then it's going to be uh, 15 20 so that's how it'll go up to 175 because uh, it'll just multiply it by 35. So the last one is going to be, uh, sorry, less than 35 because we're starting with one. So we don't want to go it beyond 35 or even to 35. So 34 is the last one that it'll do. Okay, so. Use uh, write a for loop that prints the integers 50 through 1 separate by spaces. Use no variables other than count. Now, uh, what it's asking us to do is to do it in reverse order. Now, what really it wants, uh, what one wants us to test, uh, it's testing us if we can run the loop in reverse order. We could do it. So far, what we've been doing is we've been incrementing it. Uh, we've, we've been incrementing it. Now, we would be dec decrementing it. So running it in reverse order. How we will do it? So same thing, initialize count, and we set it to 50 because it wants us from 50 to 1. Thank you, Emma, for adding these files. And so we start off uh, from 50, and we go through 1. So we would want it to be greater than 0, right? And then we want the count to decrement. Every time it runs, we want it to decrease by 1. So it will start from 50, then the next time the loop is going to run, it's going to be 49, 48, and that's how it will print. This, this line, I hope, is clear to everyone. If anyone have any questions regarding this particular line, how we are printing, adding space, just let me know and I'll, I'll explain it. I'm just not explaining this part over and over again because it's the same thing uh, that we did in the first one. Okay. So write a for loop that prints even integers from 80 through 20 inclusive, uh, separate by spaces. So separate by spaces, the one that I was referring to uh, just now, we know uh, how to handle this. And again, we just did this part, re the reverse part. All we have to do, now, and we even did 
the odd part. I have explained to you how you can even change that odd to even. And that's uh, this is how you will be doing it. Inte in initializing a, an integer type variable i uh, for which the initial value is going to be 80. And then continue the loop until i is greater than or equal to 20. And uh, the increment or decrement part is going to be i equals to 1 minus 2. Every time the loop runs, it 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 will de decrease 2 uh, from the value of whatever the value of i is. Again, it is printing. And it will start from 80, then 78, then 76. So this is how the loop would run. <clears throat> OK, so the next one is write a for loop that prints in ascending order all the positive integers less than 200 that are divisible by both 2 and 3, separated by spaces. So we are, now we are combining if and for together. Uh, we want to check if the remainder is going to be 0 if we divide it by 2 and 3. Only those numbers. We want only the numbers that can be divided by 2 and 3. Uh, and not, no, no other number. All right. So a 5 would not be in the list. Because if we divide 5 by 2 or 3, we do have a remainder. 7 is gonna, not going to be in the list because it will it, it, have a remainder. How we find remainder? We use the percentage size, a sign instead of uh, the slash, the division operator. And again, we will start, uh, they're less than 200, right? So this should be the easy part now. Uh, how to run a loop for, for a range from 1 to 200, 1 to 1,000, 1 to million. That should be easy part for us now. So what we will do is, oops, sorry. Yeah. So how we will do is, we will, uh, we will have a for loop. See how I have uh, the, the parentheses here? Uh, this is not for this one. This is for the if part. So this is where we have uh, the parentheses. Because we want to have a block now. We certainly want to have a block now. Because we have more than one uh, statements. Actually, if we don't have it, because we have a block afterwards as the if part, it will keep on running the if statement, which is for the loop. A for loop, it's just one statement. I think that it will still work. But again, it's good practice to always have parentheses to have it in a block. It's just, it makes your code much neater. So again, uh, i plus plus. It's going to be incrementing it uh, by one. Uh, it, it'll keep on running until it reaches uh, to one ninety nine. It's less than two hundred. All right, which is what it's asking. Keep uh, at the lookout for this one. Less than two hundred. Okay. So what we do is what we run in the loop. We print it out. We print out whatever the value of i is. We only print it out if this is true. What is true? If the remainder of i when div divided by 2 is 0 and the remainder of i is 0 when divided by 3. Okay? All right. The while loop. I myself haven't done all of these. I kind of stopped over here. The reason is because it was just taking a lot of time and I wanted to get my numbers up. I wanted to be able to do a lot more. So what I did was I just, you know, just got right into strength, started off with the easy ones, and got my number high. I mean, I wasn't even going beyond 150, 160, 170, and if I had keep on doing these ones, I wouldn't even have crossed 200. But now I have crossed 200 because of these basic ones that I did uh, instead of doing these, spending time, time on these ones. Just a tip to excel in the class. All right. So uh, the next one, we are working on while. How we how we tackle the while loop? So while loop, we do not. We just we just have a condition. See while, just keep on running while. This is true. What is true if it is less than 88? So we don't have an increment part. We we don't initialize the value here. We only have the condition part in the while uh, for the while loop. That's it. Nothing else. We manually have to initialize other uh, outside of the loop inside of the loop or whatever the case is. Actually, for this, we have to initialize outside of the loop because every time it's going to check here, if k doesn't exist or if k doesn't have a value, you know, it's just going to give you an error because it cannot compare uh, if k doesn't exist and it cannot compare if k doesn't have a value. Means if k has a null value. Even, even in that case, it cannot compare. So it will give you an error. So keep on running the loop until this is true. What is true? K is less than 88. And keep on printing out hysterics in a single line. 
all right not in the next line and you take care of the increment part here so you adding 1 to k every time the body of the loop runs so after it's going to run it will come back here it will check if it is true or not as long as this is true it will keep on running okay <coughs> All right, so the next one, uh, that has been declared, initialized to a positive value. So now it's telling us that n variable has already been declared, has been initialized. What you do is you print n times hysteric. So if it's 5, you have to print out 5. Now we cannot, we, if we don't know what the value is, I mean, if it's 5, I mean, if it wants us to print 5, we can't we can just say it's, uh, we, n is less than uh, is less than 5. Keep on running until n is less than 5. We don't even know what the value of n is, right? So it's actually going in the other direction. So how we handle this, how we tackle this, we keep on running the loop until the value of n is greater than 0. And then we decrease the value of n every time by 1, every time the loop runs. So if, let's say, the value of n was 5, the, the, the code lab wants us to write five hysterics. So how it will want us to, how we will do it, it will set the value of n to five so that we write five times hysteric. And how we will do it, we will set it to, the condition we will set it to if it, n is greater than zero. So keep on running the body of the loop as long as this condition is true. It will remain true as long as we don't bring it down to zero. We are bringing it down to zero but one by one, every time after running the statement, decrease the value, check if it's true or not, then run it again, okay? All right, the next one, do while. Now, the difference between while and do while is that while, when you're running a while loop, as here, it checks for the statement, the condition, sorry, it checks if this is true or false, then it's gonna run it. If it's false, it will not run it. If it is true, only then and only it will run the loop. But do while is types of loop where it will run the it for the first time, and it will check for this uh, the condition afterwards, and then it will decide that it has to run or not. So it will run at least once, even if the condition is false. All right. So let's get into the question. What it is it is asking? Given an integer variable k that has already been declared. So it's already been declared. We don't have to write int here. We, we do, we're not initializing an integer type variable. We are only giving it a value. Use a do-while loop to print a single line consisting of 53 hysterics. Use no variables other than k. All right? So how we will do it? We will, we will execute it. We will print it. We will keep on printing it as long as this is true. This is, so uh, we, could, we could do it in a number of ways. We, the, we could do it in the other way around too. We set it to zero and we write it, it's uh, less than 54 or less than equal to 53 to use the same number as uh, it's giving us, right? So, and in that case, we would be using this, k++. plus plus. So we're starting from zero and we're going up to 53 and as it, it'll keep on running as long as the con this condition is true as soon as k is incremented ap uh, after 53 if it reaches 54 it won't run again there are a number of ways um, of writing a code uh, dealing with the problem this is how I did it I guess because uh, the last problem that I did was the other way around so that kind of made sense that was the first thing that came to my mind which is why I did this you could do it either way. It's not asking us to write from 53 to 0. It's just asking us to print 53 hysterics. So you can start from 53 and go to 0, and you can start from 0 and go to 53, Whatever, you, however you want to do it. Given an integer variable n that has already been declared and initialized to a positive value, use a do-while loop to print a single line consisting of n hysterics. All right? So in this case, we do not know uh, what n is. So it's, it's been given a positive value, it's, which means it's greater than 0. It has 10, 20, 100, 1,000, whatever the value is, but there is a value. So rather than uh, we going in and trying to find out what the value is, what we will do is we will start off by printing the hysteric, 
and we will we will decrease it. We will decrement. We will use the decrement here. We will keep on decreasing it by one every time the loop runs, and at the end we will check if this condition is true or not. As long as this is true, it will keep on running. As long as soon as the end reaches one, and it this time uh, it will what it will do. And if n is one, and then it is re running this loop, what it will do is it will make n zero. And then when it's going to come here and check if it is n is greater than zero, what it will do? It will just break the loop. And Paul, when you were asking, we we're breaking here, right? And what we're not breaking the here. We do, we're not adding semicolon here. We we, we do, do not want to do it. Even it's the same with if uh, statements as well. Uh, we don't break it here. Uh, we break it afterwards, but this we break. Okay. Yes. Sorry, your voice was breaking up. Could you please repeat? Could you repeat the question? How do I do what? Yeah. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, <laughs> I'll explain this. So you go in here and you go status, all right? Now it's only showing me status for one problem. The reason why it's doing is because I have only selected one. So what you do instead is, um, you select the entire thing. Now if whatever, this is, this selects only this part, this tree. It selects the entire tree, okay? Then you show, show status, and you just go here. You see, I've done 230. All right? No worries. Oh, oh. which one were we doing? Do while, right? So, yeah, this is what, 20683, two, yeah, this is what we did. Okay, so the next one. Write a statement that increases the value of in, uh, integer variable total by the value of the integer variable amount. That is, add the value of amount to total and assign the result to total. So this is how I was doing one of the increments. I was just adding the value of i to i. I'm like the value of i. I was just adding it, whatever amount, whatever I had wrote here, and then I adding like assigning it to to this value again. How this is going to execute? It will uh, assign a value to, to total. What value? It to the value of total plus amount. So uh, if total holds 10, it will compute this part and then it will assign to this. So it will compute 10 plus the, whatever the value of amount is, let's say 5. It will uh, compute this. It's going to get the value 15 and it will assign it to total. Okay? So we're doing accumulation here. Accumulating. And doing it in four. Okay, and the total that we have already been declared. Use a for loop to compute the sum of squares of the first fifty counting numbers that, and store this value in total. So uh, thus, your code should put one into one plus two into two plus three into three. So this is what it wants us to do. Uh, we run the loop. We do i into i, and then we save it to total. And then we add whatever we got here, and we add this part. 2 into 2. So this is i again, but the next iteration of i. This is the next iteration of i. And we're adding it to whatever result we had before we got to this point. Again, total was uh, initialized but wasn't given a value. So we are giving it a value of 0 because we're going to start off uh, from 0. And if uh, the reason why we want to do it is because if we just get directly into it uh, to add total uh, this value, add this to total but we cannot add anything to null null has to have something we like we cannot add null one and null we we can add one and one we cannot add one and bilal we can add uh, we, so basically we just cannot add anything to null all right so which is why we would have to uh, give it a value here first and then we get into the loop uh, loop we already know, so we're going to start off from 1. We go up till 50, less than or equal to 50, and we increment it by 1. So we don't start off from 0. We could have. Uh, that wouldn't have made us any difference. Uh, it, what it would have done was what, uh, 0 into 0, which is 0, and then would have added it to 1. So it's just, it would have just ran it one more time, which was sort of unnecessary. So which, that's why I kind of avoided it. So it will add 
whatever the value it's going to get from here to total. So the first time it's going to run, it, it'll have a value of zero. So it'll add zero to this, zero and this. What is this? First time it's run, it's going to be one into one. So one into one is one plus zero is one. The first time it's going to get the hold the value total is going to hold the value one. The next time the loop is going to come, it'll have one. It already have a value one, and then two into four, four plus one five. The second time it ran, it's, it has the value five. At the end, you probably are printing uh, so like in the rest of the program. You, the uh, code lab is printing it somewhere, but it's only asking us to compute it, the total. So we don't worry about printing it. Maybe down the line, um, in the next couple of questions, it will ask us to print two. So uh, again, uh, what we're doing here is uh, we are finding the cube. Uh, in the last one, we were finding squares, so, and we're now we're finding cube, and then we're adding it to it. So instead of uh, we doing it twice, we're just going to do it thrice. What, that because that what cube is. A square of two is two into two. Cube of two is two into two into two. All right, which is eight. So it's the same thing. Uh, we're just instead of square, we're doing cube. If you know the difference, you, you can easily handle it. Okay, so uh, it's now in this one, it is asking us to write the inside of this part, the loop body, uh, for, for the following loop body. What the condition would be, how we're going to start off with, and uh, what would be the, uh, the condition, all right? So if you see 5 into 5, because I didn't know what really it was asking for, I did the same thing. I just made something up, and I checked the answer. It didn't work. The next time it didn't work. So eventually I got it right. How? Uh, what, then I, basically how I got it right, because I understood what it was asking. It was asking to make this right. So we start off with uh, write, the loop state, uh, write the loop when the loop terminates the result should hold the product of the odd numbers between 10 and 20. So it's asking us to run the loop from 10 to 20. And the, prod, uh, the product, it's doing it here. It's, you know, it's adding it for the product is doing it. What it actually is asking us to do this, 10 into uh, 11 into 12 into 13 into 14 into 20. This is what it's actually asking us to do. So what we will do is we want to start from 10 and we want to go up till 20 and every time we want to, actually sorry, no, 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 my bad. It's, it's odd numbers. So what it wants us to do is do this. That's it. This is what it wants us to compute. The answer should be this. The result should be holding this. It's actually asking us to compute the value. So when oh sorry, yeah okay. So when the loop terminates, the result should hold the product of odd numbers between ten and twelve. What are the odd numbers? Eleven, thirteen, fifteen, seventeen, nineteen. And it wants us to have the product. It wants us to multiply all the numbers, odd numbers, in between these two. How we will write us are the, are the loop. First of all, we want to uh, have the value result equals to 1. The reason is 1 or 0 or, sorry, uh, yeah. <coughs> I don't know why I did 1. I didn't do 0. Oh, yes. All right. The reason it's going to be 1 is because we are multiplying it, right? If we were to set the value 0, the, resu the result would at the end, even after running it a number of times, it would still be zero because anything you multiply with zero is zero. But whatever you multiply with one, it, it doesn't have any effect on it, right? Which is why we, we started off, we, the result value, uh, the first value we want to have result is to be one because we're not adding here, we're multiplying it here. So the first time it's going to have one into 11. The first value, we got the first value here. The second time it's going to be 13. So we already know how we can get the odd numbers, and we already know how we can get the odd numbers between an, a range that is between 11 and 20, and we get we give it the increment of 20. And this really is uh, it's what it's asking us to write the, a for loop, the, j just the for part of it. The body it it already has this body. All right. All right. So the next one. So assume that there is uh, there are 
couple of variables uh, i ha low high and the results have been declared that and that low and high have been initialized zoom further that result has been initialized to the value 0 uh, we write a for loop that adds the integers from low up to high, up through high inclusive and so it's going to add the first and the last value not in between so we will be using less than and equal to all right and we will be starting from low no not low plus 1 and the store and stores the result uh, in result. So what we want to do is result. Uh, so whatever the values it holds, uh, is we we've done it. The only difference is that instead of we putting in the values, we are putting in variables, and it's getting the values from somewhere else. So low has been assigned a value prior to this one. It probably is asking the user to enter the value of low and high, right? So it, the range is coming from somewhere else. We're just creating the logic. How we're doing it? So for we start off from lo low. Low is going to be the first value, and high is going to be the last value. And we will include all the values in between low and high. So we will increment it by one every time the loop is going to run. It will add one to it, and the result it it will keep on re adding result to it. So result has already been given a value uh, somewhere, which is why I'm not uh, giving it any value. So result plus i. All right. So this is how it will keep on adding whatever the num numbers are, integers are in between that range, between low and high. Okay, given an integer variable n that has been initialized to a positive value and in addition integer variables k and total have already been declared. Use a while loop. So it's only telling us that n has been given a value and these were and a positive value for that matter. And uh, k and total, they don't have a value. So we kind of have to give them a value so that it doesn't really mess up our results, okay? And we have to find the cube. Again, we, we've done it. Uh, we've done it uh, for um, in four, I think so, or in one of the while loops, we, we've done it. It's just asking us to use the while loop to do it. And again, it's just testing, at the lo us the, uh, testing our logics. It doesn't want us to, you know, get, uh, start from two and end at 10. It just wants us to start from one variable and go up to another one. All right, so how we do it, we just start off from zero and the total is going to be zero. And uh, the, it's not going to be one because we are not finding the product. We're just adding whatever we get to it and we cannot have a null. So we have to have something here. So the first time it's going to run, it will keep on running until it is uh, less than or equal to n, whatever n is, okay? And uh, we will in keep on adding k to it. So we're not doing anything to n right now. It's just a weird, it's just a number. It, it's let's say it's ten, right? We uh, the reason why we're doing it. I tried doing it just using n. We could have achieved it, I think so, but it wanted us to use all the given variables. That's another reason why we're using it. I think uh, there would have we could have achieved this without even the use of k. But it the reason why it didn't want us to do it is because it do, doesn't want us to change the value of n. So the value of n should remain whatever it is. If we were to use only n and increment or decrement it over here, and decrement it and go, go to zero, that would have meant that we are modifying the value of n. So that's what it doesn't want us to do. Okay, so the next one. Again, uh, it's, uh, it wants us to find, uh, we've done this before. Uh, we've just printed all the values on the screen one by one. We haven't added these values to a particular variable and then printed it out or you know just saved it to that variable variable. So that's what we're doing here. We're using we're doing accumulation using the while loop. That's really what the exercise is about. So we start off from zero, we start the total from zero and we go up till 50 if it's equal to less than 50 and then we keep on adding whatever we get from here into total. We, we compute it, we add it to total. We compute it, we add it to total. And then we increment it by 1. So it's, it will consider all the values between 1 and 50. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Not the odd numbers, not the even numbers. And, but in fact, all the numbers. Okay, so what does it want here? It, does, it wants us to accumulate using do while. So um, it's the same thing, guys. It's the, the only difference is that it's asking us to do it using do while. And the difference between this and this is going to be it will run for the first time. The answer is going to be the same. 
and it doesn't make any difference with us because what we are executing in between these aren't printing anything on the screen. If let's say we were to print something on the screen and the first time the condition is false, in that case it will still print it. But if we do not want to do it, then we would have used just the while loop instead. So that's really what's happening here. Again, using uh, we're doing accumulation using the do while loop, and instead of square, we're just finding cube. Okay. All right. <clears throat> so we keep on uh, getting the input from the user until a certain uh, until a certain condition is true. So we keep on asking for the user for the very for the value to keep on you know uh, to to you keep on using the standard uh, uh, input uh, feature the function and getting the integer value from the user storing it in n and then just checking if it is between n and 10 if it is then it's fine you keep on asking for it until uh, it is false as long as uh, it's in between here it will keep on asking but as soon as I, i'll give the value 11 or 0 the loop would terminate now, why we're doing do here, and not just while, because for the first time, we do want to get the value from the user. If we had only used while, what, on which condition this would have, you know, based on what this would have been checking? Nothing. We, we didn't have, and uh, doesn't have a value here. So it just would not have run. It would have given you an error. So that is why. So there, these are some, like, like one of the examples where we would want to use do over while instead of while, you know? I, I hope this is clear. Okay, let me just explain this, what the condition is. So it's asking us to get keep on getting the value if it is between this this range. So what? how we tackle this, if n is less than 1, so we, uh, we keep on running it until this is uh, true. So if n is less than 1, hmm, actually, is it, uh, that's been entered. Uh, we'll write some code that repeatedly uh, needs a reads a value to n until at last a number between one and ten. Sorry, I was just explaining it the other way around uh, because in, I think there's something like this that will come up. So it's asking us to keep on getting a value from the user until uh, the user enters something somewhere in between this one. Why you would want to do it? Perhaps you have a menu with, with with ten options. So if the user keeps on entering different values other than one to ten, you you would want to present this the same option again. So to enter the value again, to enter the value again, to enter the value again. So as soon as the uh, the user inputs the value somewhere between one and ten, it'll store that value in n. It'll break the loop. And once you get out out of the loop, n would be holding that value, meaning and would know what the user selected as the menu option, perhaps, for example. All right? So th this would keep on running until this is true, uh, which in this case is less than 1. If it is 0 or a negative value, it will keep on asking user for a value. If it is greater than 10, if it is 11, 12, 13, 14 onwards, it will keep on asking a value from the user. Okay. Write a loop that reads positive integers from a standard input. So, what does it want us to do? That uh, we keep on asking the user for uh, uh, for to keep on entering the value, uh, and we will keep on printing it on the screen until the value is greater than 100, or it's a negative value. A negative value means if it is um, less than zero. Uh, no, it doesn't say that. It could be an, it could be a negative value as well. No. So how we handle it? Instead of uh, we going in there, like I think we could have entered this the entire statement here. We could have given it a range over here. But how we are doing it? Um, so we have a variable va value, right? the value that uh, we want it to get from the user and store it here. So for the first time, run the loop, just do it, uh, and then check for the statement if it's true or not. If it is true, then keep on running until it is false. So keep on running the loop until what? The, vo the value is positive. Actually, this is exactly what it's asking. So we, it's going to keep on asking us to enter a value. In order for us to break the loop, what we would have to do is we would enter a negative value. We would just enter 0 or a negative value, sorry. 0 could, would, could break the loop 
a negative value, negative one, negative two could break the value as well, uh, the uh, loop as well. Now, what we do is we print it on the screen only if the value entered is greater than hundred. So, how we do it? We check it for uh, check it over here. So, the first thing we want to do is we want to get it from the user. Uh, for we want the user to enter a value and put it a value, and then we're going to save it in val. Why? So that we can compare it. Compare it to what? Compare it to hundred. If it is greater than hundred. And then what? What will what we will do? We will print it on the screen. So if the va value of the uh, val variable is greater than hundred, then we print it on the screen. Otherwise, we don't do anything, and we go out. And then we check if the value is negative or not. Okay. So and then we keep on running it until uh, both are true. Yeah. Not in this case. No, I generally no. You you can't do it. You have to put the part. The reason is because the do while loop is designed in a way that it will execute at least once. If you don't want to ex execute it at least once, then you wouldn't be using a do while loop. You would just be using a while loop. So if you want the body of the loop to execute at least once, in that case, you would use the do while loop. And this is how we write the do while. So we do it at least once. Then we check for this the condition. If it is true or not, then we decide if we want to run it again or not. Is that clear? How we decide if we want to go for a do or why? In this case, we write off. Uh, we want to check. Uh, we want to get the value from the user. The reason why we want to do a do while here is because. As, to begin with, val doesn't hold any value. Right? I think that was the part that was a bit confusing. So we, we want to get the user to enter the value first, and then we operate on it. And then we check if it, whatever the value is, and then we decide if we want to uh, keep on running the loop or not. Exactly, yes. We wanted to get an input from the user, which is why we did. We decided to go for a do while loop. No worries. All right, so the next one. Write a loop that reads positive integers from standard input, printing out those values that are even. Uh, it's the same thing, guys, that we did just did. Uh, the only difference is instead of we printing out the numbers that are greater than hundred, we would only be printing out the numbers that are uh, that are zero, uh, that are even. How we find even numbers? We did it earlier. We just uh, check if the remainder is zero when divided by uh, two. Another thing we want to do is we want to make sure that the value entered is not zero. We are already checking it over here, but the reason why we want to do it here as well is because if we, if the, even if the first time the user is to enter a zero value, we would get an error. The loop would not just break, but it would give us a, an error. Why? Because uh, it's checking, it's actually dividing it over here. And checking for the remainder. And anything divided by zero, we did it yesterday. It's gonna give us uh, an N error, not able to compute, and or not a number, uh, something like that. So, th so we're gonna get an error, which is why, in order to avoid that error, uh, we added this part. All right, and just and even the negative. So this part, we're adding it here only for the first time, because. For the first time, what if the user enters a zero value for the very first time? We do not want the if part to run. Why? Because if part would running the if part would mean checking for this statement as well, which would give us an error. All right. So that's the reason why we're adding these this condition over here as well. Okay. I hope this was clear. It was just a little bit tricky. All right. So what we are doing it, uh, what we're doing here, write a loop that reads positive integers from standard input and terminates when it reads an integer that is not positive. After the loop terminates, it prints out on a line by itself the sum of all the even integers. All right. So while running the loop, we're not doing anything. We're not printing while we are running the loop. But at, but instead we are ho we are getting it. We are you know getting all the sums of all the positive numbers. So how we will do it? First of all, we would we are given we are aren't given any values. 
Oh, sorry, variables. We aren't given any variables. It doesn't state that these variables are available to you. So we'll just come, let's come up with our own. So we want to have a sum variable. We want, because that's what it's asking us to print out the sum. How are um, how you do it? It's up to us. You, you could use sum or you could do uh, something else. All right. So, but sum makes sense. So we we will go for the variable name sum. So to begin with, the uh, the sum would be zero because we haven't added anything to it. And then we also want a variable val in which we will be uh, adding like getting the value from the user. Only thing available to us is the standard input, uh, the scanner variable, that's the scanner object associated to stdin. Okay. So we do uh, run the loop, and we get the value from the user, and we check if the value is uh, even, and if it is greater than zero, if it's a positive one. If that's the case, then we add it to sum, whatever the value is. If it's if the user enters two, we add it. If the user enters three, we don't add it, but we still keep on running the loop. If the user enters a negative value, we don't add it, and we terminate the loop because that's what it wants us to do. To only keep to Keep on entering as long as we keep on entering a positive number. And then at the end, we just print out sum. Nothing else. The sum is or anything. Just the sum. So how we do it, System out dot print sum. That's it. Okay. All right, guys, I have only two of these loops left that I've done. After that, if we have time, I can go into string. So write a loop that reads positive integers from side input and then terminates when it reads an integer that is not positive. So we've done this. After the loop terminates, it prints out separated by a space on a single line the sum of all the even integers. Read the sum of all the odd integers, do the same. So we are doing the same thing uh, as we did in the last one. But on top of what we did in the last one, we are also checking for the uh, odd, even number or odd numbers. So in this case, we need sum of even and then we need sum of odd. And we need a variable, a, a, like a, a variable val in which we will be getting the value. So we don't need a, like a different val a variable for uh, even or odd because we don't know what it's going to be, what the number is going to be given to us by the user. So what we do is we run it for the first time. Uh, it will execute, and the user would enter a value. If the user enters a, a um, even number, let's say two, it will run this part this one the statement this statement would be executed but if the number is uh, is not even then what it will do is it will check for this one what does this say to check if the number is odd if the number is odd then the remainder is always going to be one what in this case what it will do is it will add whatever the value is to odd so that's what we're doing here and at the end we're just printing out sum uh, sum of even and sum of odd separated by spaces because that's what it's asking us uh, separated by a space so read the question carefully okay so right loop that leads uh, positive ones uh, now on top of that it wants us to even count the numbers same it's not very difficult like we're only doing one more thing in in the if part so if it's even we want to add one to the this variable count even if it is odd we want to add count just add one to it so that at the end we would have like a total number of odd numbers enter and total number of even numbers entered so it's going to be the same thing but over here we would add this here and we would add this here This one is super simple if you know the last one. You know, that's the condition. <laughs> All right. Given a string variable response that has been declared, uh, so we just, we will keep on, uh, you know, running the loop as long as uh, the, 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 what we're doing here is we, the condition now is uh, based on, uh, like, we have a bunch of conditions and it's based on a character, not an, an integer. So that's what we're doing. We keep on getting the response from uh, the user, and we would keep on running the loop if it is this, or if it is this, or if it is this, or if it is this. Write some code that 
repeatedly reads a value from the standard input into a response until at last a y, a y or n or n has been entered. So as, as soon as this would be entered, uh, hmm, actually no sorry, this is the other way around. So as long as this uh, doesn't come, this uh, we don't enter this, it will keep on running it. Really? I don't know, this kind of seems odd. Yeah, I think so too. But why is it corrected? Oh yeah, sorry, my bad. Over here, this is what this is where we're checking. Yes, yes, yes. So we are checking here if it is not equal to this. If it is not equal to this. If it is not equal to this, and if it is not equal to this. Thank you so much, Paul. Um, I think we could have written it in a way that we check for this, 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 and at the beginning we just write this. I wasn't sure, so I just wrote it this way. You know, wanted to get it over with with the code lab. So whatever I could think of, I just wanted wanted to get it over with. All right, guys, uh, just have a couple of more more minutes. Uh, we can get into string. Um, we can have the answers too. I just want us to give you a string where um, registering constant uh, consisting of exactly five exclamation marks. So this is a string in between uh, these quotation marks. And you just enter five of these. That's it. The first one, um, you, you know that they're like very simple. So I just, you know, warming us up for the difficult ones to come. I write a string constant. Uh, Consisting of exactly one character, any character. So you just enter any character there. Okay? Uh, I chose A. An empty string, which is an empty string. This space is not an empty, or dash, or anything else is not empty. Nothing in between these quotation marks is empty. Again, this is not null, this is empty. Null would have been initializing a variable and not assigning it a value. We are assigning it a value here. Declare, uh, okay, you know, guys, this you should know. If you don't know it, then I don't know. I'm going to tell uh, Mafi Bai that you, you don't know this. <laughs> How to declare a string variable. All right, it's the same thing here. How uh, we can we we can do it? Uh, we can uh, initialize multiple uh, variables at the same time. We can do an in integer, do, uh, mul multiple integers in one single line instead of string when string play string show. Uh, we can just use one line and do it here. Okay. So it wants us not to not just initialize it, but assign a, it a value as well. Black that is. assign a space value to the variable space after initializing it. So we initialize it, two of these, and add, assign it a value. And now you know why I skipped those difficult ones and got straight into string because these ones are easy. Got my numbers up. <laughs> So we just, again, we did it in the beginning when we were warming up. We now know that this is empty, and we're assigning it to empty. So it has already been initialized. So we don't have to write string in the beginning, and we just assign it to value. And we assign, again, this has already been initialized. We just assign a value to it. We've done this in class. Uh, while we were doing the sorting, how we can uh, exchange the values. How we, we can exchange it? First, we do need one more variable. So it's telling us you, you can declare any necessary variables, uh, as many as you like. But for swapping two values, we only need one. Let's say we have three different spots, like and two people. We want them to, uh, like we have two spots where let's say 
me and uh, who's here? Paul. Okay. We have two circles, me and Paul are standing there, and we want to switch places without stepping outside of circles. So what we do is we create another circle. One of us would go into that circle, and the second one would go into the first one who switched out of that circle into that his place, and then the first one would go into the second one circle, and then we can remove that that circle. So this is how we are kind of you know swapping the values. So we assign we initialize a variable temp, so we can hold the first value that we need to swap. So we assign temp a value s1. Now we have we have this value in temp variable, and what we we can do is we can reuse this s1. Since we have the value, even if we set anything to it, we we're not going to lose its original value because we are holding it in temp. And then we, what we do is we assign the second variable's value to this one, to the first one. And and what we do is now s2 means um, we can assign another value to s2 because the value of s2 has already been assigned to s1. So we were not losing a value again, and what we do is that finally we assign what we ha were holding the value in temp for the S1 to S2. So this is how we will be doing a basic swap. Concatenation. How do you concatenate, guys? Very simple. String in string. If we want to concatenate, we've been we've been doing it. The system dot out dot print ln. We've been that, the plus sign we do, uh, do add. That is where we are concatenating different uh, variables, different strings, uh, or you know all of those. Whatever we write in there, we're concatenating them. So uh, it's just asking us to write this, and you add string, whatever the value this holds, address, and you add it with this without any space or anything. So you just manually type this one and then you add address to it. Whatever behind this is, it will, I mean, let's say if this is uh, a string variable A, now the value of A would be A, uh, HTTPS colon slash slash, then the, whatever the value of address is, like turningscraft.com. So this is concatenation, we're concatenating. So concat again, basic concatenation, concatenate prefix with suffix. Whatever they hold the value, we're just gonna, you know, add them together. Now what it's asking, the, the only thing is that this is a bit tricky. So if it holds a value sadly, it's asking us, and understanding the question is tricky, that's it. So it's asking us to add these parentheses, that's it. How we do it, we would take it as string. We won't just, you know, go in and type print bracket plus word plus this. This won't work. This would just give you an error. We have to make this string. And that is how we would concatenate this, okay? So we are actually concatenating three different strings. The first one, the second one, and the third one. Again, we are concatenating um, three different variables, but it's asking us to add a new line. So whenever you're writing anything, you know, uh, inside, uh, let's say you you are writing system.out.print, um, and you have text 1 and uh, then you have text 2 uh, sorry these are variables or no, sorry wrong example you, you type hello world so instead of me going in and writing you know this twice so remove this remove this from here so it wants us to write hello world into different lines. Instead of me going in and I guess going in and you know writing these two statements again and again, uh, no worries Alex. What we do is we use this n. n means new line. Same as um, we have others too. 
slash t would mean a tab, add a, ta a tab in between the concatenation. So we are concatenating these two and uh, we are um, concatenating this too. So we would, how we can concatenating, what, sorry, what we are concatenating? Gold, then we add a line, new line, then we add this, and then we add a new line, and then we add this. So in order to avoid doing this, what we could do is, we could just type this. Without even doing this, or this, and then adding this, we don't have to. In between the string, if it's going to recognize these two, it will just add n to it. There is a way to ignore it. I'm not sure how to, like, if you really want to type slash n, how you do it. Because if you don't do anything, if you just type slash n, it will just add a new line to it. But let's say you really want to add slash n in your string. Uh, there is a way to do it. I think this if you do this, I'm not, again, don't quote me. I don't know how to do it. I actually forgot. But you could do it, you could ignore this part and you would type it. You would still put it on the output. So this is what this really is asking, to add a new line in between the concatenation. So add spaces in these ones. So that's pretty simple. Okay. Okay, this uh, gets a bit, you know, interesting here. It wants us to get, so a sentence is a string variable, it wants us to get the length of it. How we get the length of array, how we get, like, get length of different. So length is just built in a um, uh, function, a method, uh, that we can call on any string variable and it will just give return us with the length. Let's say we have a hello world. So if, uh, and what, what holds this value, uh, let's say a holds this value. So if we do a dot uh, length this and, and give it to b. So what value would b have? b would have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. So b would hold 11 because what it, it is doing, it's getting the length of this string. Of which string? Of this variable a string, whatever this is holding. So this is how you get uh, the, the length of the string. Yeah? I, I, I think it's, it's the main class. You don't even have to import anything for this. Yeah, no, no, you don't, you don't import anything for this. Uh, as far as I remember, just try it out. Uh, in your IDE, if it works, then it works. If it doesn't work, I mean, if it works, then you still check if it has imported anything or not. Because in uh, uh, IntelliJ, it would automatically import the class, right? So if you try this out and if you see that it has imported uh, the class array, then it would mean that it's coming from the array class or arrays class at most. This is what it would be coming from. No worries. So how we can also use it on a string guys I mean this is I just learned this I thought this would only be applied to a variable and then the vari variable would have this with this method but we could apply it to any string we could have a like bunch of text here and then we could get the length of it just by you know entering it and then at the end just calling this so character add so what is the character at this position? Consider a string is an array of characters. What is the character? A character is this A, B, C, D, right? What is a string? This is a string. What really is string? Str the first value, let's say this is variable string a, a string variable a and it really is a string uh, sorry an array array of characters so a, the first value of uh, a is actually a okay sorry about that
actually sorry yes this is how it is supposed to be so string really is a, a, an array of characters this is how string is made up of it holds a bunch of characters and then it it makes up um, a string so what when you do length of uh, a string what really it is doing is it's giving you uh, the value or uh, the, the length of the array of that string so what it wants us to do is it wants us to find out what the first value is so it just wants us to find out this one it's it kind of makes this part easier if you understand this concept <coughs> I only give you the answer okay so now it wants us to get the, the index 0 the first value whatever the first value is of the string str now it wants us to give us the first one um, so character at if you do 0 um, So you see, this is not the one. So let's say you have um, what you're getting from uh, character at. So what is the character at this point? Actually, there is no character at this point. What is the character at this point? This is the character at this point. What is the character at this point? This is the character at this point. So this is how. Um, you would get the first value not by saying zero but by saying one. Oh, sorry 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 it's asking for the second one so this is zero this is one again the same way I explained it sorry guys sorry to confuse if anyone is confused I apologize so it's asking us to return M M uh, is uh, the one I was explaining it's gonna come up <laughs> that's why I was getting, I was just eager to get into it so it, it wants us to return M so it really wants us to return the va the value at uh, index one. So that's this one. So right now, whose value is the fifth character of the string name? So for the fifth one, because it starts from zero, what you would actually be doing uh, is getting the value four. The getting the value at index four. Now it wants us to give us the last value. I mean, this is just an example, Blair. It's not really means that the value is of five, uh, the string is of five characters long. It could be 10, 15, 20. It really wants us to give us whatever the last one is. So how you do it? Uh, you use this, this method, length, and then you get minus one. So that's how you will get R. Where am I? Uh, 20875. Why aren't these in order, man? Oh, I think they are. No, they are not. Oh, there we are. All right, just a few more to go. That's all I have done. Uh, so I, you know, I can, I can do it. If you guys are okay. I mean, if anyone. Uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. If anyone wants to leave, uh, that's fine. Uh, but if you guys want to stay, that's fine with me. I can go over it. No worries. So, what does it want? It wants us to find out uh, where uh, the avenue starts at in this variable address. So, what we do is we use this uh, function. We call this sorry. We call this method method index off, and then we put in uh, the variable avenue. So we want to find out, it returns the position of the first occurrence, occurrence of this one. So whenever, uh, whenever this is going to come up for the fir very first time, uh, it should give us the index of that. So if it says, uh, if the avenue is blah, 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 all right? So what it would give us, it would give us one, two, three, four. So it, it would give us three. So this would return three. 
because the index are at this point is 3 because it starts from 0. So at point 3 at index 3, this is the very first time this word is coming up. I already gave it to you. Substring. What does it do? Substring uh, would give us something in between, start the starting position and the ending point, or just a point. So, uh, uh, substring. So that you could understand it. So it only wants us to return the first three letters. So we start at index 0 and we go up to 3. So this would give us the first three one. It only wants us to give the first one. So we start at 0 and we go up to 1. It's what It wants us to give us the second one. So we don't start at 0, we start at 1. 1 is the second one. The cursor is going to be here in between S and M. And it will go 1 afterwards and that, that is what it will give us. Okay, for, for this one, we whatever the value it holds, we don't know. It could be anything. But this is a string variable and for this, we want to know uh, third through tenth. So we want to know from third till tenth. That is what we want to, we want it to return. So what it will do is it will start from index two, which in essentially is where the third character is starting and it will go up till point ten and it will give us whatever string is coming from there. Okay. Now, so it wants us to give us the last three. How we will get the last three? First, we need to find out, again, we don't know if it really is biggest. It could be anything. It's just giving us an example that it could be biggest. So what we will do is we will get the length, and we will subtract it by 3. Why? So that it would start at 3 from the last position. So go back 3 cursor uh, from the last one, whatever the length is. So if the length is 10, it, you start at 7, index 7. And then from there, you give me till the length of whatever it is. So let's say the length is 10. It, it's 10 characters long. So it will start at th three, uh, 7 and it will go up till 10. So that is how it will give me the last 3 characters of a string. Alright guys, this is all I've done. Um, any questions so far? I guess that's it then. I didn't keep you guys very long this <laughs> today. <laughs> really? Really, Paul? You want to take the stage? <laughs> All right. Guys, uh, it was fun. Uh, it was fun because I, I've already done it. Otherwise, it probably wouldn't, it wouldn't have been. Thank you. Thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Appreciate the praises, you know. Uh, guys, if you have any questions, uh, you can... Uh, you can let us know, like, you can ask any one of us, like, anyone can ask anyone a question, like, you can ask a question, and not, not necessarily I would have the answer, maybe someone else would have the answer, and they can step up and they can answer you. If no, then I guess you guys can, you know, go home, stay home, do whatever you want to do, what you were planning on doing after this, or instead of this, and you decide not to do it. Hey right, guys. You, you guys are the best because you, you say the good things about me. That makes you the best, really. <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you so much, uh, and you have a good night. See you tomorrow in the class, and um, I hope um, it goes over the like whatever is going to be in the quiz. Uh, again, thank you so much, Emma. I mean, that was really good. Uh, that was like that was a lot of effort that you put in uh, preparing that uh, that document that you did. Uh, and uh, of, of course, and you saying uh, the vector and everything. You I mean you you did panic us a bit uh, that this is something that we haven't covered.